Howdy! Today we will be going over the biopsychosocial model of challenge versus threat. We will be going over something called an external stressor, in which in our situation this will be a surprise upcoming test. And our character, depending on how he deals with it, will interpret it as a challenge and display a challenge character, or interpret it as a threat and display a threat character. Let's begin. Our external stressor is Danny's upcoming test. And after coming from a long night of homework, he glances at his calendar and realizes that he had that test. Showing the initial stress and fear from this, Danny's amygdala processes these responses in his brain's sympathetic nervous system and sends the information to his prefrontal cortex. His sympathetic nervous system causes a sort of arousal response. A response, eliciting physiological markers such as an increased heart rate, secretion of epinephrine, and reduced bladder contraction. However, Danny's prefrontal cortex analyzes this information in which um, the amygdala's emotional responses to the stress was analyzed. This operation from the prefrontal cortex and the sympathetic nervous system is based on the biopsychosocial model of challenge and threat. The challenge character of Danny will reappraise the situation, or in other words, it will undergo a sort of mind over matter. Danny will consciously think about the processes in which are causing him to show signs of arousal in the first place. It's all in his head, is essentially what he will think. This will all come from his prefrontal cortex, in which he actively thinks about reducing these maladaptive physiological markers, such as the reducing heart rate, sweating, and the overall panic state that he was previously in. Danny, after this mental reappraisal, will then think about the timeline of his testing. His emotional reappraisal will give him a sense of increased mental and external resources, and he won't worry as much anymore. Reala sorry, realizing that his Monday schedule only contains one other class, Danny won't be as worried anymore. He will successfully turn his anxiety and fear emotion into a constructive plan. For example, he'll say, I'll simply study for two hours a night, get about eight to nine hours of sleep, and then study in hour-long blocks tomorrow, since he doesn't have classes tomorrow, up until two hours before his test. Danny will then earn an 84 in his exam, and he can apply this emotional reappraisal approach for future stressors he will encounter throughout his college career, and he will overall be successful in life. On the other hand, the threat character won't be as successful. Threat Danny will let his panic state increase, and these maladaptive physiological responses will also increase as well from his parasympathetic nervous system. He will keep racing back and forth in his mind, and his sweating and heart rate will increase. His, in fact, his prefrontal cortex will do the exact opposite of a challenge approach. The fear and stress information sent from his amygdala will be interpreted as a way for him to escape the situation at all costs. He will begin to think of ways to avoid the stressor, again, from his mind racing back and forth over what he could possibly do. However, in the end, as opposed to the challenge character, Threat Danny will not be decisive on this. His mind, again, races back and forth, and he eventually comes down to two options. He could email an excuse to the professor, or simply own up to his own mistake and take the exam without studying. This is his maladaptive processes, and it will eventually lead him to procrastinate for hours on end, avoiding his overall stress on how he was going to tackle the exam. Threat Danny will eventually realize that procrastination is a good way to cope for his future and external stressors. He will frequently use it as a coping mechanism and will eventually drop out of college and be unsuccessful in dealing with future repercussions and future stressors. Thanks and gig'em.